Hello, everyone. So welcome to uh, CVCIM 101 webinar. And my name is Virginie uh, Ganivet. I'm with uh, CVDesk. And I will be happy to spend the hour with you and talking about uh, CVCIM and why CVCIM and what are the key features of this wonderful um, system. So today, the webinar is, will be recorded. So you will be able to find the link to the recording on the CVCIM YouTube channel. So it's going to take about mm -hmm. a couple of hours, but then you, but then you, will, be, you will be able to, uh, to record this, uh, to see the recording. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. We had a global audience today with people coming from different parts of the world. You, we have people coming from United States and Canada, uh, Switzerland, New Zealand, and Bermuda. So welcome, everyone. And I'm going to uh, keep the questions uh, for the end, and so you will, will, we will have time uh, for this uh, Q&A. I will be happy to answer your questions. And so you will just need to click on the Q&A icon and ask your question, and I will share this question with everybody, and I will provide the answer. Okay. Great. So let's start. So why do you want or why do you need CVCIM? So the big question so the big that a lot of nonprofit organizations have today is, uh, is where exactly does my data live? So what you see on the slide now is a typical situation that we we meet with um, nonprofit today. So down the road, the data has been recorded in different systems. So in the center of it, you have your website, but you have uh, data and information about your participants that's going to be uh, recorded and saved in different parts of in different of database. So for example, you can have your contacts in an Excel file, or you can have also contacts in your own address book. So for example, in your Outlook inbox. Or you can have also contacts in your uh, Google Apps, so in your Google Contacts. And for example, if you are using uh, an event application such as Invite to organize your event, then you will have also your event participants in this part of another database. And then if you are using an external application, yeah. I can hear such, it now. As, such as uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp to send out your newsletter, then you will have another database with uh, contacts where you have the mailing address, emailing address. And then if you are accepting payment online on your website and you're using, for example, PayPal, you will have also another piece of database with different contacts and you have, for example, the names of your donors and the amount of the payment and the date of payment. And for example, if you're also using a donor database such as Donor Perfect, then you have also another, somewhere in another database some uh, other kind of data. So as you can imagine, the issue that is all these data are not connected to each other, are not integrated, so you have no idea, for example, if your members are coming to your event or who are your top donors because there is no uh, integration and no links between these systems. So that's why we strongly believe that CDCM is the answer, and with CDCM you will have all your data in one place. So CDCM is going to be at the core of your organization, in the center. It will be, uh, it will have all your contacts, and so contact can be individual, it can be a household, it can be organization, and you will have. Beyond these contacts, you will have everything else. So you will have the relationship between these contacts. You will have your event participants. 
you will have your members, your contact can be members, so you will have all the information regarding your membership. You will have your donors and the amount of donation and the date and the demography of your donors. You will have pledges and activities so you can track the interactions with your contacts. So all this data will be all together in one integrated database that's going to be managed by CVCM. The way you're going to access this data is going to be through your website. So CVCRM is integrated in uh, Drupal, WordPress, and Joomla. So the way you're going to access the, the back end of your CVCRM is going to be through the administration menu of uh, this uh, website, of your website. So for Drupal, CVCRM is going to be a module of Drupal. For WordPress, it's going to be a plugin, and for Joomla, it's going to be an extension. But that's the way you're going to access the back end of CVCRM. And then, on your website, your contacts and members and donors and all your constituents will be able to access um, from the front end of your uh, website, we'll be able to access what we call the public pages. So public pages can be, for example, an event registration page. And then through this page, the people will be able to sign up and, and register to your event and pay for the uh, event fee. Another example of public page can be a membership sign-up page. So, the, so your members will be able to sign up and also to renew the membership through the page. Another example can be just a simple uh, form when you want your constituents to be able to sign up to receive your newsletter or just to, uh, just to fill out a form when you can have, uh, you can collect information about your donors and they can make a donation. So this will be all available on your website, but as all these pages are going to be built with the back end of CDCM. So what is CDCM? So CDCM is uh, what we call a constituent relationship management, a CRM. So C is stands for constituents, or it can be also for contacts, or customers, or clients. So it's a contact. Uh, so it can be different kind of contacts. And then you're going to manage the CDCRM, the relationship between these contacts. So the R stands for relationship. CDCRM started in 2004, so it's been 11 years now. And it has been uh, developed exclusively for non-profit and non -profit. of the civic sector organizations. It's a lot of uh, vibration. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to oh. pause because I think I'm going to mute it. Can you, everybody, mute the phone or speakers because we have a background. Okay, background. I'm going to pause. Mm. You are now muted. Okay. I'm back. Okay, so CDCRM, as I said, it started in 2004, and it has been exclusively developed for nonprofit organizations and other civic sector. So nonprofit can be any kind of non organization. It can be chambers of commerce. It can be charitable organization. It can be clubs. It can be political parties. So any kind of nonprofit. So. It's been exclusively developed and from scratch for non-profit. And it's an open source software. So open source software means that you can download 
the CVCIM software from the web from CVCIM.org website. So there is no fee, no license fee to use the software. You go to CVCIM.org and you can download and install the software on your server. Open source means also that there is uh, the, the code is open, and so you can everybody can develop new addition to the system, and there is a API available that can be used by developer to uh, add new uh, features, new extensions, or also API can be used also to integrate CVCIM with uh, other applications. CDCIM has a very strong community behind, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this community in a couple of slides. And these communities are, part, are composed of uh, end users, so nonprofit organizations, but also developers, implementers, service providers. And this community contributes to uh, fixing some code, contributes to uh, posting from uh, providing articles for the newsletter, and so there is today more than 8,000 newsletter recipients for the monthly CVCIM newsletter. CVCIM is also highly customizable, so you can really, uh, out of the box and from the back end, you can really configure CVCIM according to your needs. So you can add your own custom field, you can uh, add your own contact type. Uh, you can edit and your own and create your own membership page and event pages and everything from the back end of CV. Sometime, of course, you might have to, might need to go a little bit beyond the back end and might need some development to go to really cover exactly what you need or to add some logic to for example, an event registration page. And so that's why the uh, code is open and the API are available to, to do this. CVCIM is a web-based system, so it's going to be available from anywhere. You just need an internet browser, and it can be used, uh, it can be accessible by um, any internet web browser, you can use Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, or Chrome. And CVCM has been localized and translated in more than 20 languages. And so all over the world, because there is more than 9,000 active installations of CVCM in the world, some organizations are using uh, the, the Spanish version of CVCM, the French version, and uh, we have customers in Brazil, so they're using also the Portuguese version. Uh, it, so it has been more than 20 languages. And um, you can participate uh, if you'd like to also uh, improve or add a translation uh, of CVCN in your own language. Also, because you have these different languages, there is some option to use CVCIM in different languages at the same time. So that's what we call the multi-language. So for example, you can have one membership page that's going to be translated to, uh, for example, French and English. So what does it mean? It means that you don't have necessarily you don't have to to have two pages one in french and one one in english actually you're going to have just one page so you will have to maintain only one membership page but you will have to, the option to post this page on your website in either in french or either in english or in other languages so that's the power of the multi uh, feature of CVCI. And so these are some numbers. I'm not going to go through all these numbers, just a nice number that said more than 75 million of contacts are managed by CVCIM today. So there is, as I said, a strong community. So there is more than 50 different partners that are part of this community. So partners can be just one-man shop 
or it can be a bigger company. It can be a service provider, a web developer. It can be also um, a, a technology partner, such as, for example, uh, another software editor, for, for example, PayPal, or it can be uh, another organization. So in this community, you can participate to different events. And so, for example, the one and our biggest event about CDCRM is CDCon. CDCon is an annual conference, and there is once a year CDCon is happening in the United States, and once a year CDCon is happening in Europe. It usually it's in London, but recently there is also an additional CDCon in Amsterdam. It's going to happen at the end of the May. Uh, of the end of May. 28, I believe. In the US, we are uh, happy to, to have CDCon coming to Denver. So personally, I'm based in Denver, and we are very excited to have CDCon next week be uh, in our beautiful city. It's going to be on April 22nd and April 21st. It's a two-day conference, and you will have the opportunity to meet other end users, other organizations, implementers, implementers, developers, and learn about what you can do with CV and how you can go beyond what you're just doing, and also learning from experience from the other users. So I really encourage you, if you have the opportunity, to come to Denver to attend this conference. And there is also user summit. Uh, there is a user summit in Washington, D.C., which is happening usually in September. And in terms of training, so you, have option, you can find different options of training. And if you go on uh, cvcl.org website and you go to the uh, uh, upcoming event page, you will find all the training. So you can have on-site training, so there is some Partners are organizing on-site trainings, all-day trainings. Some are very more user-oriented. Some are very more administrator-oriented or developers. You can also find trainings online, like a webinar, so, and there is different kind of training. So I really encourage you to browse the cvcrn.org CVCR event page and find out about all these trainings. There is also local meetups. So in your own city, if you search on Meetup, you can find some CVCR Meetup, and then that will be the opportunity for you to uh, meet with existing end users. One of the most biggest uh, Meetup is CD Day. CD Day usually happening end of January, and the idea of CD Day is on the same day, you will have more than 30 cities that's going to host a Meetup. And it can be just a two-hour meetup, or it can be an all-day meetup, but it's all happening on the same day everywhere in the world. The question is how you can contribute to the community if you become a CDCM user. So all of these events are organized by the community. So we actively encourage you to, for example, to organize a local meetup or a city day. There is no city day already happening in your, in your area. Another way to contribute to the community is also to, for example, part of the translation. So there is more than 20 languages that are available, and all this work has been done by the community. So if you, are, if you master a foreign language or if you are speaking a native language, we'll be happy to have you be part of the translation. If you are a more technical person, you can submit some code, you can fix some bugs. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> you can be also an ambassador. So an ambassador is you can just sign up on cdcim.org website and sign up as an ambassador. And so if, when you will have more experience about CV and you will be happy to share this experience with uh, new users, that's something that you can consider to, to be an ambassador. 
you can also submit articles for the newsletter. And if you are more on the technical part, you can develop an extension. So there is more than 500 extensions today that are available to be downloaded from your uh, CVCM instance once it's installed. And an extension is to add a new uh, feature or in a new integration with another system to the core feature of CVCM. And, and last, of course, you can also participate in the documentation of CVCM. This, CV, this documentation is available directly from your CVTI instance. So uh, you can, if you click on the navigation menu and you click on help, you will have access to this uh, documentation online. These are some familiar names of organizations who are currently CVTI users. So there is some very famous names such as Doctor Without Borders or electronic uh, frontier foundations. But as you can see, there is different type of organizations. Some are, are more charitable, some are more political parties, some are more advocacy. And so CDCM is for everyone. It's for large organizations, small organizations, and for different types of missions. So for example, this is going to illustrate what I just said. So for example, these are statistics that have been collected recently, and you can see the repartition of who is using CVCM based on the budget. Another interesting graph is the one with uh, by sector. So as you can see, and based on all the colors of the pie chart, that there is not CVCM specifically for one type of nonprofit or one type of organization. So the missions of, of CVCM and users are very, is very diverse, and you can find any type of organization. Okay, so now we're going to uh, we're going to switch to uh, what you can do with CVCM. So these are the core features of CVCI. So you can um, you can sorry you can um, manage contact relationship membership events communication and so so far. So we're going to develop each of these uh, key features. So contact management. So you're going to be able with CVCM to build one record for each contact. So a contact can be, uh, it can be a constituent, it can be a donor, it can be a volunteer, it can be a client, it can be a customer, and so it can be also an organization, a vendor, a partner, and a household. So you have different contact types, and you will be able to. Uh, create also your own subcontact type. For example, you can need to create a contact type student. That's going to be a subcontact type of the regular individual contact type. You're going to manage the relationship between these contacts. So you will be able to uh, manage the, some standard relationships such as employee of and employer of or it can be a child of or spouse of, but you will be able also to create your own relationship type based on exactly what you need to, to manage in your organization. You will be able to segment your contacts. So the segmentation is very important to find out who are your contacts, who are your donors, where are they located, which demography they're part of. So there is a different way to segment your contact in CVCM. So you have groups, you have tags, you can also use custom fields. And so you will be able also, based on this segmentation, to uh, define some very targeted communication. So you're not going to, for example, communicate the same way to your current members versus your expired members or you're going to have also different communication for your donors or volunteers. So for example, you would like to invite all your volunteers to uh, appreciation volunteer party. 
So you will need to be able to uh, have a group of all your active volunteers, and then you will be able to send them an email. So, it, so to segment your contacts and to track some uh, custom data, you will be able also to define your own custom field, and that's going to be specific to you to your needs. And then how to increase your database. So of course you will be able to enter uh, from the back end new contacts, but also via online form, you will be able to uh, collect new uh, new contacts. So it can be via it can be via event registration pages, via membership sign up or donation pages, but it also can be just a regular and standalone contact us form. And so once the person completes the form, mm -hmm. automatically the contact is going to be recorded in your database. Activity. So all this for this contact you will be able to manage the interactions with this contact. So you will know exactly what is the history of this contact with your organization. Have they attended events? Did you have any meeting with this particular company or organization? So you will be able to track all these activities. Some of these activities are already building. So for example, as soon as someone signs up as a new member, an activity will be recorded and will be logged in the contact record. So you will know exactly when this contact became member. But you can also enter your own activity and such as, uh, for example, a volunteer uh, recruit or sponsorship. So you like to uh, approach some company because you're going to ask them to become sponsors. So you will be able to create your own activity type and record this activity in the company contact record. Membership. That's a separate module that will help you to track and organize um, all your members and to also um, retain your members more effectively. So um, you will have the option to collect membership dues. So if you are using a payment processor, uh, you will be able to collect these views from your front end of your website. And so all this information will be recorded. So you will have the membership itself, but also the contribution that's going to be the amount of the membership due that's going to be linked to the membership. You will be able also to automate all membership renewal. So that will help you to retain your members more efficiently. And so you will make sure that the, the, an email will be sent in time to your um, members before the expiration date. So the system is going to be able to send out these renewals automatically, and you can set this renewal up, and you can configure these renewals, and you can include the link to the page so they can renew the membership online. You will be able to customize your own uh, membership sign-up and renewable pages based on your different membership type and based on which information you would like to collect about your members. And then CVCM is managing uh, the different status of membership. So you have a new, current, grace, expired, and each organization can configure what does it mean to be expired, uh, to be in grace mode, or what does it mean to be new? Some organizations say, okay, my members are new for the first month, but some organizations are going to say, oh, my members are new for the first six months. So that's completely something that you will be able to configure and what we are using what we call rules to, to do so. Event. So you're going to be able to manage your events. So you're going to be able to uh, track all the registration to your event. And if you are offering paid events, the event fees will be also recorded as payment in the system. You will be able to create your own event pages and registration pages, and they will be available on your website. 
And um, but you can also register event participants uh, offline directly in your back, in the back end. So when someone is going to register online to one of your events, the person can receive automatically an email confirmation. And after the event, you will have the option to send the, a thank you note. So that's something that you can decide to do manually to a group of all your event participants. Or that's something that you can set up to be sent automatically let's say one day after the event or a few hours after the event. When you create your event page and event registration, you have the option to do it with different structure. So it's not just one fee or one fee for member, or one fee for non-member, but you can create some event fee structures that's a little bit more complex, such as uh, tables and different options that the person who is which registering to your event can choose. Also, there is a module named CV Discount that allows you to uh, provide discount to your members, for example. So you can generate your own discount code. And then you can manage uh, your list of participants, print out name badges, and then do a lot of uh, uh, reporting, of course. Communications. You can manage emails and mass emails. So there is a module named CD Mail that allows you to send out all the emails from uh, the CDCRM. And so you can build and configure your own target mailing list. And uh, you will be able to segment your data into this mailing mm -hmm. list. And then from CDCRM, you will be able to create your emailing and send it out to your target list. And then you will be able to track all the activities about your new uh, recipients. So you will be able to know who has opened uh, the emailing, who has clicked on the link that's part of your newsletter. There is also volunteer management. Uh, so this is ma there is a, an extension named CV Volunteer that's going to allow you to manage your volunteers. So you can have, for example, online volunteer application that you can post on your website to recruit volunteers. You will be able also to segment your volunteers based on qualifications, skills, and, and exactly what do you need. So you will be able to match what you need and what are the skills of your active volunteers. Volunteers will be able to sign up to an event as a volunteer completely separately from signing up to, for an event as an attendee. And you will be able also to uh, try to log the volunteer hours and to do some reporting about your volunteers' activities. Fundraising. So fundraising is really a core part of CVCRM. So you can really uh, create your own donation page and track and manage your contribution. Also, you can record your contribution offline. You will be able also to manage pledges and recurring contributions. So you can receive automatically monthly donations. And of course, there will be um, a generic receipt, thank you notes, link to uh, these uh, fundraising activities. And also, you will have the option to um, uh, allow your very active uh, contributors and donors to create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page, what we call a personal campaign page that can be can use on their own website or send out to their own network of friends or colleagues. There is a lot of features of reporting. So reporting is very important because you will have all this data in your database. Then you will need a way to understand what are your data and to interpret these data. So you can read you can use reports. So how to do reports? You always do reports from an existing uh, template. And so there is some uh, reports that are in the table, or some reports are more graphic, like a bar chart or pie chart. And then you will be able to automatically deliver this report via email. Grant management. There is a, a module named CV Grants that allows you to manage grants. 
So it can be used for grants that you receive, but also grants that you distribute. And so when you manage grants that you receive, they are more managed like uh, contributions and pledges. But CV grant is used when you are distributing grants or scholarships to your constituents. So you can have, you can manage all the process of grant management and uh, grant applications, and you can track the status of your of the grant and have people submit their grant application online. Campaign management, it's another module of CV named CV campaign. And CV campaigns allow you to uh, build advocacy campaign and by tying all, all sorts of activities together. So for example, you can have a membership campaign or capital campaign. And so you can tie, you can tie together the seminar, the uh, contribution that you're receiving, the um, emailing that you're going to send out, all together so that will allow you to track the campaign progress and make some adjustments. Also in the CV campaign, there is an option to create surveys and petitions that can be used, for example, for uh, online survey. Then if you need to go beyond what CVCIM can offer, then you can go with uh, using some external applications that have been integrated with CBCIM. So, of course, the main one are the website, but also payment processors. And there's more than different, 10 different payment processors that have been integrated. Or if you want to use uh, your own email, emailing software, um, you can. Um, you can uh, use, uh, for example, mm -hmm. custom contact or MailChimp or campaign monitor, and it's um, it's going to be uh, if you prefer not to keep using, uh, not to use the CV mail core, but going with this external application. These are options as well. And last, so I'm. I'm going to talk about what you need to do uh, when you decide to use CVCM. So that's a project that will be need to be managed. So you will need uh, someone in your organization, or it can be a volunteer, or it can be, of course, a, a partner, a service provider can help you to manage this project. So you will need, um, CVCM is going to be really in the core of your organization. So you will need to make sure that uh, it's a technology project that's going to be um, managed and that's going to be completed. So, of course, there is some cost uh, associated to uh, to this project. Not necessarily financial cost, but cost in terms of time, investment of time and resources. So, your organization and your colleagues and your staff members will need to invest time to make sure that we're going to integrate um, all the data, I mean, to migrate all the data correctly in the system. And so that will be something that you should keep in mind. So the first step will be implementation. So once you download CDCM on the cdcm.org website, you will have to install CDCM on a server. So you can decide that to go uh, with uh, your own server, or you can think about going with hosting uh, options as well. So if you go on cvcm.org website, you will have, uh, you can look at who, which providers are offering option, hosting options. Then the, you will have a big part of configuration. So you will use all the needs, all the tools that are available in CVCIM to cover your needs and to configure CVCM to exactly what you need to track, which custom data you need to collect. Then there will be data migration. Data migration is a very key part of the project. So you will have to regroup all the data that you have in your different sources. So we talked at the beginning of the presentation that you can have data in different databases and different applications. So you will have to regroup all this data. You will have, of course, a work of cleaning this data and remove, the, for example, the duplicate contact 
And so then before proceeding with the uh, import of this data into your system. Then you need to think about backups options. That's very, very important because the CVCRM database is going to become the history of your organization. So you may have to make sure that these are going to be safely backed. And then you will have to think about upgrades. So upgrades are very important. So we're, thinking, we're talking about upgrades of CDCM, but also upgrades of your um, CMS, uh, such as Drupal, WordPress, or Joomla, because they are tied together. So um, sometimes if you want to upgrade CDCM, you will have also to make sure that your CMS is also graded in a compatible version. And trainings, uh, eventually, if you want to have your end users be trained, that's something that also you can, you should consider to include in your, in your project. So I'm done with uh, this. I'm going to uh, open the questions. I will be to answer your questions. I'm going to, to switch to um, the... So I ask you a few minutes. So I'm going to switch to the Q&A to answer your question. Okay, so do you want to answer questions? So in, uh, do you want to enter question in the Q&A so I can answer your question? It sounds like you have some issue to see my slides. Can you see my slides? Oh, I have a question from Pam. Pam is asking about uh, if it's difficult to integrate other email programs such as Constant Contact. So these, um, so these integrations are already available. They are available in other extensions. So if you go on cvcn.org, you will be able to browse all the extensions that are actually uh, available already. And so there is an extension to integrate Constant Contact, Campaign Monitor, and also uh, MailChimp. So right, in terms of uh, development of this extension, uh, it's, uh, you will need to use API, and so you will need to be familiar with the CVCM API, but also with the other applications API. So if, in this example, it would be Constant Contact API. But, uh, the, that's a, but the benefit of the community will be, to, um, will be to benefit about the existing extension. So uh, if there is already an integration that has been developed and available as an extension, of course, you will be welcome to use it. Anybody has another question? No? Okay, if you want, if we have a little bit more time, I will be happy to switch to a demo, and so you can see the actual back, back end of CVCM, 
And uh, I apologize because it sounds like you had some issue to see my PowerPoint slide. And but I hope it's going to work now for uh, the demo. So I'm going to switch to the demo. Can you see it? Okay. Okay, good. All right. So, and uh, if you have more questions, please uh, post your questions on the with the icon Q and A. Okay. So, this is um, this is the homepage of um, a CDCM of your uh, backend. So, what you can see is are uh, some example of reports. So each user of CDCIM can um, can decide which reports they want to include in the dashboard. And so, for example, on the left side, you have an example of a report about event income. How much revenue did you get from your different events for a certain period of time? And so this is an example of a graphical report. And when I move the mouse to the pie chart, I can see the amount and per event. Another example on the right side is a an example of a report. It's a table, and it's going to show me the 10, 20 donors uh, of my, for my organization. And as you can see, there is an aggregation of the donations. So for example, I can see that Neil Baker has donated twice, and the total of his donation is $780. So each user can decide which kind of report they, he wants on this, what we call dashboard. Okay? So then here, the black navigation bar is what we call the main navigation menu. And so from this menu, you can search for uh, different components of CVCIM, so you can search for contact, for the contribution, membership, event participant, and then each of the other options are specific to each component or module of CVCIM. So this is about contribution, event, emailing, membership, and so on so far. Here, this is the administer menu. And this is where you can find all the menus to administer your CVCM, configure, create your custom seal, create your profile that's going to be used, such as web form, and many other options to customize and configure. <coughs> Here from the help, you will have access to the documentation. So this is the online documentation. And then there is the user and the administrator documentation. And you have also access to a community forum that will be a way to uh, exchange with the other uh, CDCIM users and implementers. And so you, it's a very, a very active forum that you can have access from here. OK? So let's say if I want to search for a specific contact, I can just enter a name here. So for example, I can enter my call, and I'm going to have the result of all the my calls that are available in the database. So I have Michael Parker, Michael Johnson, and I have also a, a company with um, Anderson Company. So uh, this is um, because Michael is an employee on Anderson Company, and then you can see that this company, and you can see that the icon is different, it's a little bit blue, and that you can see that the email address of this company is the actual uh, it's the email address of Michael. That's why this company is part of the result on my, of my search on Michael. So, you can see that Michael Johnson and Michael Parker are individual contact type, and you can see that the symbol is a little bit brownish. So when I click on Michael, I'm going to have all, info, all the information related to Michael. So I can see that he's an employer of Anderson Company. I have his job title. I have uh, addresses. And as you can see, 
one contact can have different addresses. I can have one main address, and actually my call is sharing the address with this company. So the benefit of this is if you change the address of the company, automatically all the employers of the company will have the updated address. But my call has also its own address recorded in the system. And here you can see that there is an integration with Google Maps. So if I click on this the little icon, I will be able to uh, see the location of the home address of my call in the Google Map. These are uh, information about is uh, the way he wants to be uh, contacted. So it sounds like Michael said that he doesn't want to receive phone calls. And below, you will find some custom fields. These are the custom fields that you can define you and create yourself using the back end. And this is the way to do it is to go to administer, customize data, and custom fields. So you can create all your own custom field, and there is different type of fields you can create, and you can organize these custom fields in groups in set of custom fields. So for example, all these set of custom fields are about uh, constituent information. And on the right side, all these, cust these two custom fields are about board. So the question is, Michael, yes, is a board member and is a treasurer. You can make this custom field searchable, so you will be able to search on this specific custom field, and you will be able also to include this custom field in reports. And then you can see attached to the Michael Johnson contact, you have all different tabs. And this is all the information that is related to the contact. So for example, I can see that Michael was registered to two events. And when I click on the tab, I can see uh, to the name of the two events that Michael registered to. And for each of these events, I have the amount of the event fee that he paid to attend the event and the date of registration and the role so it can be a sponsor, it can be a speaker, it can be an attendee. Then I can see that Michael is a member. So when I click on the tab membership, I can see that Michael is actually a member by relationship. So because Michael is an employee of the company Anderson Company, the membership is owned by the company. But as an employee, is going to be a member as well. That's what we call member by relationship. I can track all the activities that Michael had with my organization. And so I can see that his membership status has changed. I can see that I printed some PDF letter that I sent it. I, ha I can see that I had, we had a meeting with Michael on November the 20th and so on and so far. So that's part of the history of the contact with your organization and can see all the relationship of Michael. So I can see that he's an employee of an Denson company, and I can see also that he has been referred to Polet. So this is a membership, a relationship type that we can create. And another way also to, as I said, we can segment your contacts. So there is some groups, so I can see which, my, which group Michael is part of. So Michael is part of the newsletter subscribers. So this is about everything related to contact. So now if I want to do a, a search, I can do a search on, for example, all my individuals or my organization contact, or I can do a search on a specific group. Or if I want to go a little bit further, I can do a search on a specific part of CVCM. So for example, I would like to know um, all my members who have attended an event. And that's possible with the advanced search. So as you can see with the advanced search, I can do searches on different parts of the city, on different components. And so I can cross the data over in one search. So as I said, the segmentation happens in groups of tags. So for example, I can show you the different groups that are already available in, in the system. 
and so you can create your own group and also add this con the contact in manually in the groups or you can also uh, use what we call smart group smart group are used for uh, saving a search and then automatically when you click on the list of contacts of the group it's going to send out a query in the system and so you will have the result so an example of this will be uh, individual living in Alaska so if I click today I will have a certain number of contacts but tomorrow I have a new contact living in Alaska so automatically this new contact will be added in the group so on the right side if I click on contacts I will have the result of this search so three contacts are located in Alaska and then from a group of contacts, you can take a certain number of actions. So you can send an email to the, all the contacts, you can print mailing labels, you can export the contact to an Excel file, you can uh, print a PDF letter to all the contacts, and you can also uh, add all the contacts to, to an event. So there's different options of actions that are available to you from a group. So for example, if I decide to send an email to all these contacts in one time, it's going to be just one email sent one by one to each of the to use this HTML edit to compose my own email, or I want to save some time, so I'm going to use an existing template. And so the benefit of this template is that you don't have to rewrite the email each time. You can, for example, use this um, contribution thank you later. And then, as you can see, there is some ways to personalize this email by using what we call token. So token will help you to have the actual value of the fields that are sitting in your database in this email. So this email will be personalized by dear Sophie and dear Andy and dear Terry, and with the exact amount that they donated and the date. I'm going to stop for now. Do you? I'm going back. Do you have any um, any other questions for me? No, no more questions. So I think we're going to wrap up this uh, webinar. And uh, thank you for your, for your time. I, uh, I hope that you have now a good understanding of what you can do with CVCRM. And I was happy to, to spend this time and show you uh, uh, this uh, very powerful and robust system and dedicated to nonprofit. And um, please visit cvcm.org to find out more about uh, extensions and other features and events and local meetups. And uh, thank you for your time and, and have a great day or great evening for the other part of the world. Thank you.